We are live for a Thursday evening. Welcome everybody from the UK and around the world to the Truth Proof live stream. And welcome, Paul. Thank you very much, Les. Yeah, as we say every week, it soon comes around, doesn't it? And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to tonight. A few voices tonight to back up what I'm talking about a lot of times up, uh, up around East Yorkshire, you know, coastline, which is good. Yeah. yeah. What have you been up to? Well, well, first of all, I'll just say off the bat before I forget, uh, when I look at the stats, there's half the people that watch the videos are not even subscribed to the channel. So if you are one of those what's not subscribed and you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing, please. Yep, yeah, that would be good. And thank you very much. And uh, So what have I been up to? Yeah, I've just been preparing for a, a video show on Saturday and uh, new method of uh, working. So I've had to do a lot of work on that one, but all coming together. And this isn't the paranormal, is it? This is no, no, no. It's just just a music uh, video. Yeah, yeah. Superb. But well, what you what you've been doing, Paul? Then? Oh, I've, I've, I have been busy, and but yesterday morning I I met up with uh, a woman in Dane's Dyke, and there's before right. that I, I need to expand on that before uh, somebody jumps in. Lovely woman who had had a cat sighting in 2019 big cat sighting mm. in the dike really close to sighting probably within 20 foot i mean we can touch on that a little bit l later if we get round yeah. to it if not we'll do it sunday we'll it sunday will you yeah she allowed yeah. me to record her audio as we walk around so really good mm -hmm. we've got okay. a few people oh, in, the we got in the chat then paul it looks like there's a few in the cut in the chat tonight let's go through well some well there's yeah we've got 115 in there already we've got margaret webster disabled welshman welsh wend dragonborn Great supporter of Truth Proof. Thank you, Mike. Al Durham, Rivington Pike. That's Lee. I talk cryptids. Good to see you, mate. Declan Walsh, uh, Stuart Gibbons, Ben Kay, Blue Shift. Thanks for that information uh, earlier today, Rob. Really appreciated. We shall do something with that. Tino, Sober Carper. Let's have a look. And that I've run out now, please, uh, people. So. <laughs> Don't blame me if uh, I've missed you out. But, oh, Stargazer Eternal. I think Mrs. Lynn is in. Pete will be in watching. Uh, let's have a look. The, oh, Patrick Daniel. There will be more. And we'll just touch on a few names, Margaret Webster, as we go through. But uh, let's okay. just open it up. Yeah, well, in. I think I've said that. Yeah, we'll open it up and uh, I'll probably disappear, collecting some questions, and I'll leave uh, you and your guests on the screen, Paul. Yeah, so, but, yeah. so before you bring them in, Les, we might as well say it. We, we value some questions tonight. Oh, definitely. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we value your questions and uh, because, obviously, there's not just me on. We're quite lucky tonight that, well, who we got on? Well, we have Mr. Bob Brown. Uh, we have uh, in uh, Linny and uh, Dr. Martin Abbas. Yep. So uh, just hit them with some questions. Uh, no, it's not about the common cold, though, so don't be asking Martin out about uh, ailments. It's all about the unexplained. Okay, well, let's, let's, bring, let's, let's go for it. Let's start the show, Truth Proof live stream. Welcome, Bob. Hiya, Bob. How are you doing? Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Good nice to, to be you. with you both tonight. Yeah, welcome, uh, Ian. I hope Ian, you're right. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Yeah. And finally, welcome, Dr. Martin Abbas. Hiya, Martin. Good to see you. Well, thanks for you guys for giving us your time tonight. And uh, it, it's brilliant. I mean, we're going to touch on... Where's Bob gone? You, have we lost him? No, sorry. We've got rid of Bob. And, uh, and right, bring Bob on. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice to be talking with you for three. There's four in, with me, but <laughs> let's get it right tonight. Because uh, I find myself all the time talking about the strange things. And I'll say something like, I don't know, there were me, Pete and Linny, or there were me and Bob and we saw this. And when Martin come up, we heard this sound. And there's just a host of things that have been seen and experienced in, in this particular area. So it's good to share a bit of this information. Plus, we want to touch on this for at least five minutes, uh, which is what Martin and myself have devised, this stratification tool, But and we'll have time for that. So where do we want to kick it off? Let's start with Bob. And Say that again. I mean, how, many, how many years have we been going up there, Bob? Quite a very few, delay. Paul. You know, Quite I think I, I got introduced to you in about two, 2016, I think it right. was, or 2017. But been going up there for quite a while. And you introduced me up there. And what a strange place is Benton. 
you can be up there five minutes, ten minutes, and not going back long ago, I was up there one night doing my trifle meter, and I got frightened. I got scared. Yeah. For no known reason at all, it frightened me as though someone was watching me. Mm. And I'd but never, you know, ever get scared. Never. Do you know, I'd, I'd, I'd forgot about that. And I think that. I well, shouted to you. I said, Paul, get over here now. Yeah, and and if you think it's just a couple of blokes Please. on cliff top frightening themselves, it's not. Because we've gone all over the place in all weather conditions, it dead of night, and and this silly bug has been wandering off on his own dank cliffs with his tri-field meter and all sorts, and just disappeared. And I can see his torch coming, he's flashing his light, he's waving his arms, and I said, what's the matter? This, and it's the one and only time, and he goes, I feel frightened. He says, what do you mean? He says, I don't know. He said, I just, there's, there's something, I feel like someone's watching me. <clears throat> strange feeling, strange, strange thing to come over you. And and I'm genuinely, there's nothing pre-planned here, people, probably apart from this stratification tool. Uh, I'd forgot about that, Bob. So, yeah, hey, interesting. Paul, and don't you, don't you think, I think you told me that Steve Ashbridge had beat up either a week before, and he was frightened. Very similar well, place. It, uh, Steve, had, Steve had felt the fear, yeah, and I've, I've felt remember? it. And I think, yeah, there's oh. a few of us had this kind of experience. I mean, Paul, was I'll that the, um, you know, in the far, the far, the far um, bench where we sat? And it was very dark and quite foggy that night. And I said, "Can we go?" Was that was that the place where you're talking? About? It, it was close. Yeah, it was close to there. He was actually walking. And mm -hmm. then there were another time. We're supposed to be serious, oh, aren't well. we? I'm supposed to be serious. That I got squatted down in the grass, and I, uh, as Bob were walking, <laughs> and I, I just put a little tiny light on, and I saw him stop and look, and then I jumped out and tried to frighten him. So mm. it, it, you've got to be sensible, aren't you? You know, you, 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 yeah. I'd <laughs> seen the light, and I knew yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. So, but, so you know, it was, but when you think about Benton, what, what go on. What a strange I, I place that. it is to be there. It, it, it is. And, you know, for people that, because I know Say, there's what people... What a strange in, place is Benton. Yeah, I know there's people in Village, there's people in, in and around Bridlington that sort of watch this, and some of them will be thinking, ah, I doubt it. But when you're sat watching your TV and you've got your curtains shut and you're not in these locations, it, you know, it's a, it's a different kettle of fish. I'm getting stories all the time. So I'll just throw it to Ian. Ian, what do you think, Ian? I mean, you've started coming up there fairly often. Yeah. It's just over two, about two years now, and pretty regular, three, two, three nights a week, sometimes more. And it's it's off. It's just, uh, I don't know, it gets, in, it gets under your skin. We go up there, all sorts of weathers. You know what I mean? And sometimes it's not very nice, is it? Because it's... You, you, you know what I mean? You're soaked by the time you get home. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just for them times. You, 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 occasionally you'll see something or you'll, you'll hear something or somebody else around you will, you know, experience something. And it's, yeah, it just, it just it bugs you. Yeah, it, it's good that we've got a decent kind of group of people around us because they're not, they're not kind of fantasists. Nobody's just saying something for effect. And I think you'd get caught out if, if if you tried doing that, like a few weeks ago, Mark lit up that white disc, and then Jeremy saw it. I saw the disc with Mark, but nobody saw it with Jeremy. But we know he saw it. You know, it, 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 seriously, he's just not that kind of bloke that's just going to say it and try and get a bit of attention. And I don't think so at all. But uh, uh, what are your views? What's happening there, Martin? Well, I, as you know, I've been up three times. Um, well, over, over the last three years, I've been going. Um, I, the reason I asked you about the bench was because when, when I was there for the second year and you showed me around, that was the time that we only stayed for about 15 minutes on that bench. And we, I said, can we leave? And I, it, yeah. I had that fear. And mm -hmm. I just thought that's quite interesting triangulation because I hadn't told you I was necessarily scared. Mm -hmm. We just sort of, you know, hightailed it out of there. Um, <laughs> but um, no, since then, it, you know, obviously with a, a good group of people i've not been scared since um but it's very unusual place it, it, it seems like there's an awful lot of activity there um and as ian said when i went down there you know 
when it's your sort of first or second time when you're going down there, it kind of shows off. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that last that last sort of time I was up there, it really did. It was really interesting. Go, go on, walk us into that. Oh, just before you do, I wish we'd have thrown Link out to, to Al Durham because Al went down there once. And I know Al had a, a little bit of a... No, no, it weren't earth shattering, but you, I'm just looking at him in chat. He had a bit of an experience, so it's strange that it's sometimes people who've never been before that that get that that hit. But back to you, Martin. Just walk us into why it's strange. Well, I mean, the the first time I went, so sort of, uh, it was raining, and I wasn't there with you, Paul. I was with a with a friend who was going to the uh, awakening shows with me, and um, we lasted about two hours. It was raining. Uh, it was awful. I mean, it was freezing. Second year, I, I met up with you and Ian, and um, I thought my eyes were playing tricks with, on me. You know, I, I thought my retina was adjusting to the light, and then I was seeing these little yellow flashes like tinsel uh, in the in the, in the ground. And then you you sort of said, "Yeah, that's exactly what we're seeing, um, but potentially way more way way more amounts of it." Um, and then that was kind of it. I didn't really see very much more. Maybe a few satellites in the sky. And then this last year. When when we when the family came up and I was obviously scouting for UFOs, we had that interesting were frog uh, <laughs> incident. On the same night, um, we then saw some un- unusual sort of UFOs moving around the sky, and then some flashes of light, which were, were sort of in the same place of the sky. And I, I I thought to myself, well, look, could it have been a meteorite just sort of hitting the atmosphere and and exploding? But then. You know, even if it was a tale of meteorites, it wouldn't be in the same place. You know, the world would rotate round, and and it would hit yeah. slightly, slightly differently. So, um, and it looked very much like, I don't know, almost like the the retros of of, of a spacecraft firing. You know, as, as as a light hit or or something of that nature. And it just was very interesting that you were seeing this sort of light phenomenon in the same space in the sky you know, seconds and, you know, 17 seconds, 20 seconds apart. And I've got a, I've got a bit of a capture of that. And I think you do too, which was very interesting. I mean, you don't see that in no. sort of, you know, certainly not on the London sky. So for me, Bempton is a real mecca for me. Um, mm-hmm. Being a Yorkshire lad, you know, it's, it's more so. So I get to get to go and visit too. But um, yeah, as, as UFO goes, I think, I mean, I think that's, that's got to be our sort of skinwalker, ranch site um for the uk you know sort of our english triangle as it were yeah i would agree and uh, we'll get to some of that ian filmed in a moment but you've seen we, you've been with me bob and seen these flashes of light we've we've watched them out well not you don't know they're coming it suddenly we're just like going did you see that and it's it gone in a blink Can yeah you you don't, no yeah many a time that is and you you don't expect it you know people say why don't you film it you can't film all the time or else your battery will go flat. And when yeah. you want to film it, you would have a battery. Well, I mean, spot on. But you just don't but, know when they're going to... It's true, no, isn't it? Because no, we've said that it, before. Shall we put camera on true. all the time? Uh, what what we'd need, uh, and we're not asking for this because it's not going to happen, but what we you, you'd need is a serious amount of money and a piece of land where you could rig cameras up filming 360, I once said, well, 24-7 with massive bank of sort of hard drives that's going to collect this data and more than just three or four people investing time in it, then, you, you know, you, you, you're in with a chance because, I mean, we were up there, I think, Monday night, me, Ian and Pete, huge flash of light in the sky just in a concentrated spot, real big flash of light, but you've not got a camera on, it just happens. And it, that's frustrating, Ian, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it is. I mean, what, what Mike was saying about the flashes of light, um, after he said where he'd seen it, I did start filming in that particular area. And we have we have picked some up. I have, I have sent it over to you. But yeah. What is strange on that is, in, in a couple of frames, there's just the start of something, and then in the middle of it, there's like a triangle-shaped light, and then it goes, it seems to go into that other little bit of light it's like it skips in and out. Yeah. As well as this little flashing thing that's roughly in the same spot. And I think it's about seven times you see that flashing. Yeah. I mean, well, I, if Martin hadn't said he'd just seen that there, 
then I probably wouldn't have looked up in that particular part of the sky because yeah, rough. and you have a small triangle, a small blue grey type yeah, triangle right, yeah. that's there, yeah, and exactly. and. I've had loads on today. It probably sounds like a weak excuse, otherwise I could have sent Les that footage. However, I have sent him a bit of footage, what you sent me today, filmed, I think, on Monday. It's not smoking gun of UFOs, people, if that's what you think, but we'd like your opinion on it, please. Put some questions in capitals for Bob, Martin and Ian and myself, if you want. And Les, because, you know, people have got loads of things to ask Les as well. But I'll just break this down. There were a little bit of activity in the in the car park, the visitor car park, and we're probably half a mile away from it. But we, with the psionics cameras, it's a little pinpricker like, and it is, it is illuminated. You can see. So Ian decides to fire camera up and just look towards the car park. What he didn't know until he started looking through his footage. Well, I'll let Ian tell you because he filmed it, and then we'll get Les to put the footage up because it's 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 weird. That, go on, Ian. I was just yeah. Paul was behind me. I just stood next to uh, stood next to Pete, and there was cars in and out moving about, and you know torchlights or whatever in the car park. So I just put my sirex on, started filming it, just get an idea if anyone's climbing over the fence or whatever they're doing. You know what I mean? Um, and that was really it, really. And then decided to look through the footage only only today. And if I had to look, if I'd looked to it at the right time, I'd have missed it. There's just like two flashes really quick succession so it's like it's that so i rewound it flash rewound it flash so i emailed it to paul for because i mean i've got no editing thing or anything where you can slow it down and paul's had a look at it and i've just briefly seen a little bit earlier on and it's it's off i mean i i, I didn't see it i mean on the you can hear me and pete whether it's on the audio or not we're just we just carry on talking otherwise yeah you know i mean we're just unaware of this but it looks like from the footage, it's it's above and behind us. I, I would I would say so, Ian. Yeah, and uh, and th this is the thing. I mean, we, we're all conscious when we're up there of seeing flashes of light that just light up daylight in a blink of an eye, a light switch on and off, and it's gone. But yeah. this was even quicker because I had to break this down from like fifty percent, seventy five, twenty five, ten percent, and then just to stills. You know, so that you guys who are watching now, what we got, we got nearly 200 people in. It's not smoking gun of UFOs, but it's interesting that, that how many people were there? Were the four of us? I think I think Mark was possibly there. Yeah, so four people and nobody saw the the land light up. No, it's, so, yeah, I mean, it's like it's like the couple of weeks ago when it was really bad fog. I mean, it was really heavy. There was that fog, and there was flashes all over the place, weren't they? Again, yeah, which there was, is, there was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's off. I mean, they look like there was above us. I mean, at one time, one, I mean, my wife came with me, and you saw one directly behind my wife. Yeah. And then where that where that crag is on this cliff, it it, it appeared to come up from there, and then stop level with the top of the cliffs. So it, was, so it must have been low down that for it to flash. But for that for that intensity. It must have been really, really close because the fog was that thick. The the, the fog was very thick. And uh, talking about you can't see probably 20 feet in front of yourself. So you're thinking, what are you up there for? But yeah. it just shows you don't have to look to heavens yeah. to see what's happening there. Because uh, Well, Bob knows this. So Les is going to play this now. Thanks, Les. So you see the first flash? You probably missed it. Yeah. Again, yeah, we've been surrounded before. That's the small one. Then there's another. None of us saw that. I have added no light whatsoever to that. That's as Ian sent it me. I threw it into DaVinci right. Resolve. And I just broke it down and then took a frame capture of the brightest frame. Now, that's nuts. <laughs> Why didn't we yeah. see that? Oh, let's just let it go again. That's good. It's better.
I don't get it. As <laughs> bright as that, isn't it? It is bright. That's, you know, that's ridiculous. It's, yeah, well, I, I'll tell you what, I, I put my money where my mouth is. That's as Ian sent it. If Ian's got no objection and anybody in chat says you've added light to that, I send you raw footage because it's got no of any personal data on it. Providing Ian's okay with that, I can, I'm quite willing to send raw footage yeah, because right. I have not added any light to it. So that. Why didn't we see that? I mean, what's your well, views, Martin? Sorry, go we'll on. To, we'll have to ask Pete tomorrow, won't we? I, I yeah. don't think Pete saw it because he'd, he'd have said. He, he would have done. He'd have said. Yeah, I mean, the lights, the lights you can see in the distance, that is the the, the, the trees in the car park. Yeah. That's what, we, that's what we was looking for. But, I mean, that's just... I mean, I had no... No, I've seen that. I had no way of seeing that it was as bright. It was just a... I played it back with just a quick, and that was it. Mm. it didn't look nowhere near that intensity. That's lit the whole area up. It has, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I right. stand by what I said. If you if you think it's been tampered with, give us a shout. I'll send you raw footage. That's, that's can't be fairer than that. You'll have to slow it down and do what you do. We, but you'll find that intensity. Any views on that, Martin? Well, it's definitely a head scratcher. I mean, if you think um, what, what 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 could be the possible. Re uh, plausible explanations for this could it have been lightning well there's mm -hmm. no there's no lightning before or after that no. to to be seen could it have been some kind of exposure of a camera behind you well the the shadows don't appear to be you know you it's not casting a shadow is it of, of us <laughs> no, it's, it's not. Quite high up. it's got to be quite high up and quite high intensity and short duration could it have been that you didn't see it because you blinked well there's four of you blinking at the same time really <laughs> no so, yeah. so there's yeah. some light well, it's that's why it's a head scratcher. So, um, yeah, tricky one, tricky one. Not, not that I think it's unexplained, isn't it? I mean, that's <laughs> I can't explain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we, we've all been up there. I mean, uh, particularly me and Bob, we've been up there when we've, we, but we've seen it. We've both, both sort of gone, "Wow, did you see that flash of light?" And and it's gone like as a on. light switch on and off. It's daylight for a, a switch, a flick of a switch. But, you know, I spoke on Howard Hughes in 2018 and just before I went on, I would, you know, he advertises who was coming on and somebody contacted yeah. him and said that they saw a flash of light on cliff tops, and they lost. I think they said they wanted to get back to the car for, prom we'll say half past eight because I haven't got that info in front okay. of me. They got back. They'd lost about an hour and a half of time. We didn't lose any time, by the way. There were none of that. But uh, interesting that you've got the flash of light. There's an, the elderly couple walking who had the flash of light and they had an horrific experience that, that I were relayed to me. So it's strange. So <laughs> take it wherever you want, guys. If you vote, you want to add any anything that you've experienced up there. I mean, we haven't, we haven't really touched on the sound in any detail, have we? Uh, that, was, there, was there any sound with that flash of light? I mean, you would have detected no, something. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. There was, oh, yeah. There oh, was, oh, sorry. Ian said a click. Yeah. Yeah. A few, okay. a few, a few seconds before then, there's just a, like a, a like a light switchy type of thing. Well, it's not the first time we've, that's been picked up. I mean, that's another story that Paul is maybe going to go on about. Uh, the dash cam footage and other things. Mm -hmm. is, there's these funny clicks. I mean, when I went around to Paul's and he, and he, he was playing it, on that Da Vinci thing, you can see this, the spikes. And he said, it's going to do it now, isn't it? Because you could see it and then click. And it was nearly in the same place on different journeys. At, at different times where this funny click thing is. But, so you'll have to look at that, Paul, and, and sort of like have another I will look. do. And I, I don't want to put Les on the spot because I can see him in background. Uh, if you can't find it, Les, just put your thumbs up. But if you can, if you could find the dash cam footage... Where, where, no, that's fair enough. Because he's looking at me. <laughs> no, it don't matter then. It don't matter. But basically, well, I'll talk. Yes, all right, Les. I'll talk about it. And if you find it, that's good. Basically, probably oh, what? Carl, Carl on, we've, heard, we've heard noises below ground as well up there. Ah, that's true, Bob. Yeah, we have. Many a time. Yeah. As though a girder had fallen underneath us. You could hear Very clattering. Heavy. Sounds like industrial machinery, like working yeah. in a warehouse. It's odd in a hangar. I, I think I... 
digging Sorry. underneath. Yeah. Somebody go on. Like used it a jackhammer or something underneath. It's strange. We've heard strange noises. Yeah. Go on, Martin. And I was going to say, I mean, it might be difficult to do, but has anyone done any sort of ground radar or anything like that? I think I asked that in, a, in, one, of the, yeah. in one of the chats uh, in the last week or so. What? I just thought that would be really interesting to do, but obviously if it was ex-RAF base, it's going to be, I don't know if you'd even be allowed anywhere near that with uh, ground radar. What, but ground, you know, ground penetrating radar? Exactly. If there's machinery down there, then it would suggest sort of underground tunneling, underground network. And we've heard of these stories about you know the bricklayer who's you know boarded up the tunnel and you show me on the um on the trip up to the um up to the walls the um the the, the base that's been sort of bricked over yeah, said, yeah, yeah interesting to see what's in there and where that goes it, uh, it, it, it's, it's fascinating you know because uh we, we this story keeps surfacing of the 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 submarine the small submarine where the submarine. small submarine surfaced at foxholes i mean how far inland is that ian from us 12 15 mile yeah yeah thereabouts yeah and, quite quite easily yeah and i was first told about it by a, a, a an old lady whose dad worked the land back in the war and he didn't have to go to war and she took he took her to watch a submarine surface in an area of water and that and then out of the blue, somebody contacted me to say that his dad said that they used to walk out behind uh, b where, the place where he worked at Foxholes, and there were a concrete area, and there were a, you went down steps, it was a flat area, went down steps with little portal type windows in, and those little submarines hung from steel cables, and it's oh. it's just crazy. That, that that story came up and that one weren't connected and then there's a few people and apparently it's all filled in and covered over now but then we've got a story of uh, submarines entering entering an underground river underneath Bempton so where would they be going if there's any truth in it yeah, exactly <laughs> So, so either everybody's – we've got three completely different people from different generations, an old lady, this life. guy whose dad told him this story, and they're all, they've all fabricated a strange story regarding submarines that are going inland and, and around foxholes. It's an odd one, isn't it? It's interesting triangulation, and I think it just confirms again that one of the reasons why maybe there's some activity there is that it is um, – you know, an active base over at Filingdales, for example, and we know that there's a, a heightened amount of activity around military areas, um, notwithstanding that, the, that, you know, this possible area of high, strange, high strangeness just off the coast that you mentioned as, as almost like a triangle. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it all kind of merges into one, doesn't it? It's all very similar. You know, you get that at Skinwalker, you get that in other areas uh, around the world, and it just seems to be exactly the same in in Bempton, but with but with everything in such a small, um, well circumscribed area. Yeah, uh, yeah, I would agree. Uh, There's uh, lots of activity of submarines around Bempton as well now, nowadays. Okay. But yeah, well, there's there's a submarine training ground, isn't there? About uh, yeah, I, I don't know how many miles off it is, but that, there is. It's, it's shown on naval maps that there's a submarine training that ground is. out there. But so, but there you go. So uh, I, I I wish I'd got an answer to what's happening, you know, but I really don't. But what about? I mean, I'm looking at you sat in that that room there, Bob. What about potential for what people call the hitchhiker effect have you do, you do you ever feel like you've brought anything back with you from these locations the yesterday morning must have been about four o'clock i'm up i'm always up early oh yes as well and yeah. I put the telly on and i'm just sat in the recliner looking i'm um, just thinking about things and some sort of creature I thought it was a Sasquatch, really. Walked, well, in front of the TV, walked in front of the TV, but it was quite a small <laughs> one. Quite big, muscular. And he just came across straight to that wall and vanished. And I looked it's... again, I thought, am I seeing things here? It's, it's, it looks not... like a small... Like a gorilla type thing, being it's not well. That's I, I'm, I'm, 
that's a new one, but it's not the first time you've said you've seen something literally walk through a wall and walk across the room, is it? Oh, no, it's not. No, that's happened again. Years ago, it, that came from that window over there to my right here and walked straight across there and into that wall. And that was quite a big person doing oh, that. And what, 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 we need, what we need to stress, stress here is that Bob's 40 foot up. Is on is on to second floor, and that door at the back of him is. W w imagine that door open. That's where I was laid on a mattress in 1993, uh, and w when I wrote Night People, and uh, which whatever gets side right. When I wrote Night People, and that's where the sp the light came up from the landing, and the spindles went bright white. And I was laid there watching it, and everything just exploded. So it's that room, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then Which we did a we did a, a program <laughs> with uh, with uh, with Collins, Andrew Collins, and we it was we, he was talking about interdimensional, and this voice came through and said, "Explain it <laughs> really did. loud." Wow. Yeah, yeah, we had we had that one that was picked up on on audio, weren't it? Explain it. Yeah, yeah. We had it on analyzed Android. and everything, and they reckon it was coming from this room where we were sat. That what that, that I forgot. That's that's that one on a podcast, weren't it? Yeah, with Andrew Collins. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So, so what what's your thoughts then, Ian? If like Bob's just talking, we're not saying that what's happened in Bob's flat is is a result of visiting these areas because. You know, because I've just said 1993, there were strange things happening then. But does it worry you going to areas thinking you could have some this hitchhiker effect? Yeah, very, very much so. I mean, I mean, my mum's probably watching this now. A few things have started happening at my mum's house, which I've told you about, which is really, really, really strange. I mean, my mum's pretty open to things and, you know, she's sensitive and seeing a lot of things throughout her life and everything. But only this week, um, my oldest daughter was here with the grandkids, uh, only 20 feet away from where I'm sat now. Um, the kids are just getting getting the kids ready to go. And she said, I just got pushed. Uh, pulled, sorry. I went, what? Pulled? And I thought she meant she'd, she'd got pulled on a journey home from work by the police. I said, what do you mean got pulled? She says, I've just had my hair and my jumper pulled at the same time. So it's mm. like someone had, had grabbed her and yanked, yanked her. Yeah. I just went, because the kids was there, I just went, all right then. And then she went and then she told me the next day exactly what had gone on. I know my wife's not far away from me now and she was not like pulling faces. But yeah, it does It does worry me sometimes about stuff to come home with and I, I think you can, things can be created and... Mm. Yeah, it's it's a weird. I mean, well, the things that's happened with my mum just seems to have accelerated recently, and some of the some of the things she's seen are um, at really close quarters, are dissimilar to what potentially we've been seeing at a, you know at a distance up there at Benton. It's uh, it's off. It's really off. I mean, obviously, you might not want to, but we are in as much detail as you want. Or don't want what 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 we're talking about because yeah, I know you've told me some of it. Well, anyway, my mum. I mean, she's she'll be listening now. She won't mind me saying. I mean, it'd probably be better in my mum's own words. But she said she started seeing these like when she's going up the stairs, she'll see like little streaks of light, and she said she can actually sometimes manipulate it and move it. And then she it was there. She stood on the app landing on the stairs. And then uh, I'm getting bored of it now. I'm off to I'm off to bed. So she's gone to bed. Anyway, that's that. That's, that's the end of it. Then not that long ago, maybe a couple of months ago now, she says I was laid in bed. My stepdad's laid next to her. She says I was a mad. She says I'm, and she was adamant. She says I'm absolutely wide awake. And she says I'm just closing my eyes, waiting waiting to go to sleep. Uh, it's a private road where they're living. It's 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 pretty out the way. And she said she saw a light coming through the curtains. So, well, there's a road outside, but that's a bit odd. It, is it a car? But she said it came through the curtains and it moved along the curtains. So, on the inside now, 
And then she says, and it went across the wardrobes in front of her. And I'm like, right, okay. And how, how big was it? So she said, it'd be the middle of it would be in about a metre. And she says, the only reason I know that is because each wardrobe door is a metre wide. So she said, this ball of light was about a metre wide. And then she says, the rest of it was maybe half that size again. So it's nearly two metres across. And she said, it was like, like tentacles, if I remember rightly, of light that was just sparkling and moving. And I said, what, did, did you just sort of like catch a glimpse of it? She says, no, no. She says, it was between four and five minutes. She was watching it in a room, and then it just, it was gone. She says, I kept closing my eyes, looking up, closing my eyes, looking up, and then that was it. It was gone. Did she feel fearful? Um, I, I'm not, I might be getting it mistaken here because she did, she did tell me, oh, that was the other thing. She got, um, a, she actually wrote it down. I was going to say that, but I didn't know yeah, if you wanted to sorry, say it. Yeah. No, she got she got a voice and she wrote it down, and I can't I can't exactly remember a hundred percent. It was said um, something along the lines of, "Don't be scared of them, help them." But there was something only a couple of weeks ago that she I mean I speak to my mum all the time that she said did happen to her, and it that did frighten her. She didn't. She said she didn't like that. And I'm not I can't quite sure. I should remember what it is, but I get told that many things and all the rest of it. You know I mean, and yeah, apologies, no. but I can't hundred percent. You know what I mean? So I don't want to do it injustice by getting it getting it the wrong way around. But she said no. she didn't like that. She said that's the the first time in a long time that so much frightened her. She said I didn't like that. Yeah. I didn't so like I, that. I, I wonder what it meant. I mean, I know you can't remember exact words, but don't be scared help them because i think yeah. when you told me to i said well i wonder if whatever it was was talking to your mum to help someone necess- uh, not necessarily some unseen entity talking to each other yeah and uh, about you do you know what i mean i know we'll never know but it's, it's... No, she said it was it was she said it was a a man's voice she said it, she said it was a strong voice but a soft voice a gentle voice so is it that, that she might have known Linny? No. If, if it had been, you know, I mean, someone in the family, like my granddad or whatever, should have should have should have recognized, should have known. And but with that sort of disembodied voice phenomenon, was there any sort of other elements to it? So that kind of you know, the, the smell of cigarette smoke or any other sort of phenomenon that you might have got with that? I don't think so. No, she not not this time. She didn't she didn't mention anything about that this time. Mm. She'll be, uh, she'll be, she'll be watching, and she'll be pulling first at me now. <laughs> she needs to but, fill out one of our uh, triangulation forms. <laughs> she's got to fill the form in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There oh, we yeah. go. We'll come to it at some point. Don't worry. No, uh, well, we can come to it when you want. I mean, we we, we can touch on the sound if you want uh, on the cliff tops. I mean, I, 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 we're not got a questions yet, Les. But have we got questions? Just put a thumbs up if we have, Les. Yeah, we have. So let's let's talk about the sound for a little bit then, Martin. Sure. Uh, if if you don't mind. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, so I, I guess the first thing to say was that I I, I went into that evening, and I, I'm sure you all remember, with that attitude of if this is going to be a great night, we're going to see an awful lot of stuff. And lo and behold, yeah. we saw a lot of stuff. Um, so I think the attitude that one takes into a, into an event is really important. So that's why it's in the triangulation tool. Plug plug. Um, so what? Yeah, so nothing had happened. It was still quite light. Um, you know, the sun hadn't even set yet. Um, and I was, we were just sort of chatting and sort of looking around and seeing if anything was going to happen, um, joking around. And I sort of was leaning against one of the wooden posts, you know, sort of fence. Uh, to describe it, there's a there's a deck. You're on the edge of the cliff. There's uh, wooden fencing which you can lean on. Maybe don't lean on it, but you can lean on it. It seems sturdy enough. Um, there's a sheer drop on one side, um, and we're on we're on sort of a, a almost like a peninsula of the cliff where there's another drop on the other side with a bit of a path between the two. And we're sort of sat there, or rather stood stood there, and I'm leaning against one of the fences, and I hear this sort of kind of thing. And I thought I thought Linny was <laughs> messing about, if I'm honest, and I thought you know 
did someone burp or something, <laughs> you know, that kind yeah. of thing. And then a few, uh, then sort of a few minutes later, I hear this this noise again, exactly the same. Um, and I said, oh, what was that? And then everyone sort of, you know, keeps quiet. I, I get to my phone to try and get some video of it um, because often you, you forget to do that. I don't know if that's part of the phenomenon. It doesn't want it's you true, to, yeah. to video or to or to photo or to record. So we were very lucky in, in that, you know, within a few seconds, I'd got the thing up. And then it was only sort of for a few seconds that I could video um, the sound near us. So we're stood on the decking. The, the sound appears to come from beneath the decking where we're stood. And, and bearing in mind, we've been on that deck for, what, two hours, an hour and a half mm -hmm. prior to that. Yeah. No sounds pr prior to that. No sound of creaking of the ground. No, no movement of the foliage. No animals near us. Um, we probably would have scared them away even if there had been. Um, not even a bird. No, no birds even. Um, certainly no frogs. Um, and um, this noise, this noise is heard, and then everyone sort of, you know, suddenly goes very quiet and is listening intently for the noise. Um, I didn't, I didn't hear the lower silence begin, although I think it may have been a bit quieter because we were all sort of focusing. Uh, lower silence being that sort of phenomenon where the world around you goes quieter and and things become a bit more sort of coherent in your in your hearing, um, and 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 the noises sort of become very amplified. And, um, you know, the sound of songbirds. Um, and there's an awful lot of, as you know, birds, because uh, it, it, it's a nesting area for puffins, etc. We, you know, that was, you know, we could all hear this sort of sound. Um, and then it moved. It moved from one side of the decking to the other side of the decking with, a, 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 with sort of a square of foliage between the two bits of decking. But there was no movement of the foliage and no movement, apparently, of foliage beneath the deck. Um, it just suddenly moved from one side to another. So either this frog was, you know, Usain Bolt of frogs or, you know, uh, and, and very stealthy at that, you know, the predator of frogs, you know, it, it suddenly just dis it just suddenly went over there. So we get a little bit of footage, a little bit of, well, auditory footage, as it were, um, of of this noise. And then suddenly, maybe 20 seconds later, it's it's halfway down the cliff on the other side of the cliff. And how the hell did it get down there? You know, could it have been yeah, the creek? Right. Of, of the cliff and then it's on the top of the cliff again and then it moves up a hill and you can hear it sort of in the distance and you think well that's a bit of a head scratcher how on earth did that happen um and and everyone's sort of yeah i can hear it over here i can hear it over here and it and it gradually moves away from us um but it's it, but it doesn't seem to be in any difference in, ten, in intensity well, and yet we can all hear it as it moves away but uh, but uh, from what i can gather and you're right that how you've described it as its movements are right, but I think its sound changed because Ian came up with I think perfect analogy for the sound because I couldn't work out I didn't hear it when you first heard it because you're going, hey guys, can you hear this? Um, people are talking and we'd not we'd not switched onto it like you did. Luckily, you you caught a little bit of it, didn't you, on yeah. on the phone? <clears throat> but what? What do you think it sounded like, Ian? Because I, I do agree that what I, I heard sounded like what Ian's going to describe. It was like, uh, you know, the granite but the, the granite stones that you use in curling when they hit each other? You make that noise. On the ice, when you're sliding the and stones on the sliding ice. Sliding on the ice. It was like that. It was sort of like, I don't know if you're picking that up, but it was a strange, like, loud but not sharp, if you know what I mean. It was it, weird. It, it, it was were weird. an odd sound. It were an odd sound. Yeah. So that combined with other stuff, it, it you know, it were interesting. And then opposite end at scale, you've got what Bob's on about, you know, with the industrial and the heavy machine. Mm. Not, not you don't hear machinery. You don't hear plant machinery moving about. No, you you don't. Hear, I, I used to work at exhibition centre in Birmingham uh, years ago, and when when we when they cleared an exhibition, they'd got great big fork trucks in with overlong forks they'd pick things up and if they dropped them because it's in a big hangar you'd hear that reverberation and that's what it sounded like mm. you know so, but it's your frog, but they, you know that well, no, I'm still, I'm, i still like the wear frog idea but uh, <laughs> um but in terms of the, that noise i mean the unusual thing about that noise is that you've been there well for many many years and you've never heard that noise before never or not since no. necessarily You've had mechanical noises. You've had you've had um, obviously potentially animal noises. 
but this noise was very different and it was an unusual version of that and if i thought to myself well self if this is the cliff then why has paul not heard that before mm. um is it because it's um an unusual fault line that's it, it, you should have heard it before i mean you know you can try and second guess it if it's if it's an animal well why didn't we see movement within the within the foliage why didn't we see something move how on earth would it move up and down so quickly if it was some sort of animal was it that there was many versions of the animal and they were calling to each other so if it was a frog was there a female frog it's calling to its net you know mating season who knows it's july right yeah. um but then again you've not heard it before you've not heard it since there's no known animals in that vicinity so if we're yeah. trying to debunk it which we should as good good investigators do then i can't explain it you know yeah. I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping it's something interesting, but it could have been the cliff. It's still open to suggestion, well, you know. But well, I came up with the idea what what the movement in cliff. And it's, obviously, yeah. if you've got all these layers of chalk, well, they pop in as the well, as maybe. these things are, are, are dropping. So it could be. But well, why I, have you it before? I know. Well, tell me if I'm wrong here. Well, we'll make Sigson up with us that night, Siggy. Yeah. Right. He's, he's, he's fished those cliffs fifty years. He'd never heard it. No. Do you, do you know, I, I like saying 50 years because it's a long bloody time, isn't it? And that's yeah, it does, yeah. In fact, yeah. what any more to add to that, Ian? Or anybody before I just jump onto what Siggy and Bob I want to do? I mean, I was just going to say when Jeremy went went round to the other side of the cliff and he stood up on the railings and he sh he shouted, "It's coming from down there." When we 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 sort of like moved around that side, I was expecting to see possibly, you know, I mean, some of the cliff coming away. And that's what we could hear. Mm, yeah. but like Martin said, but it, then it moved, it came up and over and away. But a few weeks ago when Carl Dan was up there, he said he heard like a, a splash. I mean, yeah, fair enough, there's the sea there. But to hear a splash, it's you wouldn't hear it. He said not, it. That, not at that distance. No, it's it's not, that's, that's nearly yeah. in the in the same in the same area. Yeah. This and is Ronda was there, a big clap. We had a real loud clap, but slightly to the left of that. And I think, I think nearly everybody heard that. Yeah. It then makes you wonder. I mean, could that be transmitted noise? Sort of, you know, the the sound waves going through the cliff and coming out the other side, much like a clap in a cave yeah. or, 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 or 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 in a or in a or in a ravine. And then you think to yourself, well, where would that noise come from? Well, there was some fireworks going on that evening and we thought maybe it was related but they weren't quite far away and I, you know the di the dispersion of that kind of noise from a firework would have to be i mean it would have to be very poor i mean you, you miles away a firework and then reverberating through a cliff okay it's granite i don't know what the properties of uh, well, uh, well it would be chalk uh, composition mostly of those, those cliffs yeah all chalk so could it have been that? Well, again, yeah, but you've been up on those cliffs when there's been fireworks at other times. So again, why why isn't this sort of a normal phenomenon that people then understand as happens on cliffs in that area? Um, yeah, very unusual. So then you think to yourself, well, okay, maybe there's been some noise reverberating from beneath. So then that comes back to that whole, well, is there someone doing some digging work in that area? Is it some sort of you know subterranean network of t uh, tunnels or channels? I mean, I think there's some evidence that there was um what was it the um um the, the the counterfeiters and the um the pirates and things whatever used to used to use tunnels in that area i, I can't remember but i think that was something yeah, smuggling there was yeah, smuggling. Like smuggling yeah so then you think to yourself well could it be someone messing about in one of these caves and it's come up but then again why isn't it something that we hear regularly on the cliffs um so very unusual hard to debunk just straight off the bat um yeah and and again, I thought quite mechanical in some in some ways. Yeah. So. Do, you, do, you, do you know? Well, just before we go to some questions, if that's okay, and I and I need to just stress at this point, we're happy to have you you guys on for full two hours. But anybody who if time's limited, just say. And if your time were limited, Martin, we'll get to this. Uh, but I'm happy to just, say. that's brilliant. So just before we get to some questions, then I want to jump to Bob because we talked about Mick Sigson and. Mick, as as I've said, I like to say, fished up on them cliff tops for fifty years, man and boy, as he says, didn't he, Bob? He did, but, yeah. I've, I've told this story, but I love it when there's somebody here to back me up because otherwise it's just Paul. So me and Bob went down, and when I set a camera up and, and I filmed Mick 
talking about what he said, described as the spaceship that landed on that hill back on in hill, 1998. Yeah. No, November, it weren't it, Bob? Yeah, with and November. It, it all, yeah, he told us all about it. And when we'd done, because I'd asked him, if have you ever seen these spheres of orange light? And he's going, no, I fish these cliff tops, blah, blah, blah. That's I'm not right. going to say it again. I'll see if I can get to end the story without saying it. Uh, 50 years I've said it. So, so anyway, he said he'd never seen them. Put the cameras away. We all know this, but Bob were there. What happened, Bob? I put the cameras away. I'm not away. joking. We just put the cameras away. We packed everything away. We started to walk down. And Siggy said, then them orange lights appear in the sky. One appeared. We tried to get the cameras out. It went out. Walked a bit further. They appeared again. And mm. again. And again. So we carried on walking down. Got camera out. Went out again. Mm. And he we said, I've never before. seen them. I've, I've fished up here for 50 years. We've we never seen them orange lights. I've heard about you talking about them. But it's nice to see him now. And it got him interested in the subject again. It, it has. It's got Mick hooked. I mean, Mick started coming up now. It looked as though, to, to me, but they know you're out there. They know you're there. And they'll just show when they want to show. Yeah, I would agree. And it's we've true. got Les here. And uh, he's showing when, when he wants to show. And he's got some questions for us, have you, mate? Yeah, well, first of all, for people who don't know about the area, uh, Paul... Obviously, I'm going to put this footage on the screen and it gives people an overview in the daylight of the type of area and the cliff tops, you know, the huge cliff I'm, tops that are there. I'm um, glad you've designed that. I saw that bit of footage and I thought, God, yeah. I don't know what I've filmed here. What's he going to show? So I'm glad you've done that. Brilliant. Uh, and uh, obviously, you can tell people what part of Yorkshire we're in uh, while this is running. And uh, if, we're, if we're kind of run that now. <clears> well. You can see the landscape. We're in East Yorkshire, aren't we? Obviously, and well, not obviously to the people That's that right. are overseas. Or go on, then, Ian, fill us in. Well, it's just looking out over the sea from sort of like Speed and End down towards Benton Cliffs. And what you can't see from this one is how high them cliffs are. What just over four hundred feet down to three hundred feet. Yep, yep. Yeah, they're pretty sheer in parts. I mean, they are straight down. The tide very rarely goes out around them unless it's a big tide and it's not accessible you, you can't you can only way you can get down there is either by boat or by a rope and yeah there is some idiots that do go down on ropes but uh, rather than than me it's uh, yeah it's it's, it's the, it, it really is and uh, it, like you said it gives people an idea and it gives people an idea of how bleak it is i mean you can see there's nothing there so imagine what it's like on an October night at 11 o'clock at night. Do you know you don't what I mean? Forget, Paul, Paul, it's a bird sanctuary as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. So in day, in the, the area of Bempton gets a lot of footfall. And, uh, you know, uh, people want to look at the seabirds. And just at this right. juncture, I'd like to bring in bef uh, just before uh, we go on to the questions and uh, the like, is the kind of lights that you'll film. Now, we've talked... Obviously, all night up, to, up in the live stream tonight, we've talked obviously about the lights at Bempton. I'm going to show people now what you've actually film, filmed. Paul. This is just a small selection of little, literally little short snapshots of longer footage that you'd be looking at here. Some of them are five or six minutes long. But that's not what I sent you tonight, Les, is it? No, it's something I, uh, I found on the uh, com. Okay. And it gives people, it illustrates to people the type of lights, the size of lights, the the glowing lights, you know, how much they glow. And uh, we're not just talking about pinpricks here. Well, you, them's on the horizon, they're boats. That's right. <laughs> Those, those ones below, those with the sort of the yellow lights, aren't they? Both? The yellow lights are boats on the horizon, yeah. And obviously, you can see the stars. And then I, I, I threw up a selection of uh, footage earlier as well. I mean, those aren't flares. I mean, you know, it's a military area. You think maybe there's flares in the area. But those are we we've, we, do you know, we, we, we know there's been a military exercise taking place 
yeah. last few weeks, and I think Ian would agree with me when we've been up there. We we've agreed that I would I would think ninety nine point nine percent of really bright stuff that was showing on this particular night were military. Not yeah. these, but, yeah. but on, on the night in question. Yeah. But, but that's, obviously, that's just plain the um. So th that level of brightness was the same level of brightness as that flash in the sky. You know, so you know, there's that star Linny when when you said, Look, there's a flash there, and then it goes off again, the same place. Yeah, yeah. Fine level of brightness that the sudden flash was occurring. Um, and you you might say, with that level of intensity, could that have been the cause of your yeah, um, but when you lightning kind of level of, of brightness when which you but you've just come out with a good point there. Uh, yeah. they look bright, but they're not illuminating all surface at sea, are they? No, no that's no. the point. You'd say that with a with a flare because that's its design, isn't it? Yeah. But 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 yeah, what I'm saying is that what Ian caught in them few frames that nobody saw lights the land up. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It, it, you know, oh. it, it really is an interesting capture. That I've got another clip here, Paul. And yeah, I've got them. Yeah. Just... There. There it is. That were a lot right. longer. I've, I've How interesting was that? And they're slowly going. These were lights that were showing up on land, obviously, and you can hear Ian. I've got it now, I'm filming. Well, it's, to be honest, Pete, it. Hey, up. This one's incredible, Paul. Mm. It does make me wonder if it's, if it's military because it has a strobing. That's strange behaviour. Absolutely. But, then, but, but you know that sort of planes can't stop in the That's sky. Nuts. So it's anti ground isn't it? Yeah. That absolutely cr crazy. Or it's drone. It's it's interesting, uh, you know, and that's just a small a small selection of things that Bob's managed to film with me. Ian's filmed. I Ian's got them? some interesting. Go on. Paul, what about the the ones we took at Waldgate? Yeah, we got some brilliant uh, gold orbs up at Waldgate. Mm -hmm. I don't mean I forgot about them, Bob, but there's simply there's that much of it. Yeah, absolutely, oh, loads of it. Okay, have, there's a lot of footage. You have we've all. Well, I say all of us. I mean, there's me, you, and Jeremy. We've all got uh, psionics, and we've do film quite a lot. And there is a lot that you see, and we try and explain it away. There's bits of it that you just can't explain away. It's just odd. And then there's the obviously the ones that just are there that just appear that's so bright. And then by the time you've got you sorted yourself out to get your camera on it, it's gone. It's gone, or it's popped up somewhere else. Yeah, but even if it's tech. Even if it's military tech, it's it's behaving in such a way that is so unusual that it would confirm that there's things like anti grav technology that we that we, we're not being told about, and, and and thus it's you know it's stuff that we should be able to access and, and utilize as a as a populace. It's it, it, you know it, it's, it's 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 incredible either way. Do you know? And you make a good point because we're not up there thinking everything's got to be from some distant planet visiting us and trying to say hello. You've just said it, military tech. Some of this could be, and it's still mm. just as interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's what it is. I mean, a couple of weeks ago there was that that sort of like big operation that was going on there, that exercise, and we we saw a lot of aircraft uh, spitting flares out. But the difference between them is when they was illuminated. The sea, you, it, it was like it was brighter than the moon. It was lighting yeah. the sea up and yeah. coming coming back at you. Whereas the orange ones that sometimes are static in the sky for quite a considerable period of time, they don't it don't reflect on the sea. You see, that is really good benchmarking because um, an, an objective observer would say, "Well, yeah, it's this all the same thing." But you you're you're differentiating between what you know to be tech versus unexplainable with the fact yeah. that it's at the illumination level and the, and the intensity of it. I mean, that stuff that's high up in the sky, you know, when you're looking, you know, straight up, your neck's bent and you've got a flash, that's that's really high up. I mean, the altitude on that is, is incredible. And what, what sort of military tech does a flash for no reason? I don't know. <laughs> um, 
whatever uh, what, what what would its use be what giving itself giving its giving its location to location a away yeah yeah <laughs> why on earth would they do that so what could it what else could it be well it's not the ILS because we we know where that is when we're when we're up at the at the cliffs it's not a satellite satellites don't do that um mm. so again is it meteorite and as i said you know if it's going on in the same place it can't be a meteorite really because of the movement no. of the earth so um unexplainable unusual and probably not tech mm, i would agree we've seen at one on quite a few occasions when we used to be up at the uh, at the top stand that you see on the far left just appear to the left of the hill and it would follow the profile of the land so yeah. it literally up and down and then at one point it went behind the uh, the visitor center and was yeah. moving behind the trees and you and then it just went and it's like, well, if it's if it was a summer in the you know in the far distance, it wouldn't follow the contours of the land that's up close to where we are. It mm. being a straight, it's surely being a straight line. And then sometimes they just stop. I mean, quite like I mean, last year we we both filmed what well, which we attempted to film. We saw a real bright light coming towards us, and me and Paul mm. and Pete was all watching it, and it it just stopped. It stopped and became a star, didn't it? But that it's, for all intents and purposes, it's, it's, it... yeah, it stayed there. The rest of the the, re the rest of the town while we was there, and I'd, I'd have put money on that. That was it was hundred percent moving, coming towards yep. us, and it just stopped. And you you realise I don't think it became a star. I'm just saying that if you'd have looked up, you'd have thought it's a star. star. Yeah, yeah, it's can just I, like that. yeah. And, can I, can I think Les wanting to break in here, but yeah, one, I'm sorry, Matt. Sorry, Les, just one sec. And match that though, Paul, with the fact that okay, you've got this really incredible bright lights up above, and then you've got this stuff in the grass below. There's that is not military. I mean, what the hell is that? I mean, is that is that our brains being affected by some electromagnetic wave or frequency? Is it ra radiation? I mean, I've said to you before, you know, you should be careful up there. I mean, maybe you need your Geiger counter out because. You know, you said to me that you'd come across that cow, which was flipping radioactive. And I said, you know, medical hat on. You sure you're you're not, you know, you've not been, you know, irradiated. You know, it's a Chernobyl job. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, these things are, you know, happening. And so you have to be, you know, be careful, as, as you said right at the beginning. But likewise, it triangulates into being something other than tech when you've got all of these layers, you know, mm -hmm. ground level, mid level, you know, and atmosphere. Atmosphere. yeah, exactly. Upper atmosphere. Um, right. Sorry, Les. Sorry, right. sorry, Bob. We'll get to Les now. Go on. Yeah, uh, at this juncture, I've got to ask some questions, some great questions. In thanks for all the question, guys. All the questions in caps, by the way, uh, which you've dutifully done. The ones I've got starred here, and uh, some questions pertaining to tonight's discussion, uh, Benton, but also some general questions. So, I'll start off with this one from uh, Steve O. 71 how many solo experiences have you all had that you haven't even bothered to tell anyone do you want to go around the table with that one I, well i'll start with me because I, I don't want to dwell on me i've probably been more vocal about things that have happened to me than maybe anybody here i, I would yeah. think i'm not i don't want to, i don't look at it as a badge thing a thing but i think i probably have so let's ask other three Start with Bob. I've had a few experiences, but I never say anything sometimes, even in this flat here, things happen to me. And then I, I'll, um, it might be take me about a month and I'll say to Paul, you'll never guess what happened up here. Mm. And he'll say, why didn't you tell me? Well, I just think it's norm to me, but it might not be normal to other people. Mm. I, I think sometimes are we chosen as people to interact with aliens or whatever because um, you, you can be out there some nights or in here and you could see something but the person next to you can't see it mm. it just makes yeah. you wonder are you are we chosen to see things does it target certain individuals yeah yeah, I I think the you, I think it does. But why does that? Why does it do know. that? Uh, I mean, obviously, I don't expect people to tell 
uh, Ian or Martin to to say anything that they don't want to say. But uh, have things happened to you that you you think to yourself, well, ah, it's not even worth talking about this, or uh, you know, or it's worth talking about, but I don't want to because it sounds too ridiculous. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I've, I've got to agree with what Bob says. Um, you can be with somebody, and I'll see some of, and the person who's stood next to me, you know what I mean, whether it be in work or whatever, and they aren't a clue. And it's just like, okay, what was that all about type of thing? And I try and rationalise it in my head. Did I really see that, didn't I? Um, nine times out of ten, yeah, you know I mean, there's, there's probably some rational explanation for it. But sometimes it's it's so obvious. And it's like, okay, what's that all about? Mm. And, you know, I mean, I, I got told years ago by a medium, he said, oh, you, you should ask. Well, I'd never stop asking because it, Excuse me. it never seems to stop, really. There's stuff happens, unusual stuff. That's just, you know what I mean, just odd. Yeah. Don't Things you think, don't you brilliant. think, yeah, Lene, that you say, why does it happen to me? I, I think, personally, I think the more you, the more you sort of like accept that you've seen some of it, the more it seems to happen. It's, I mean, yeah. I've, I've seen and experienced stuff from, you know, nearly as long as I can remember, and it's, I've, I've forgotten about more, you know, I mean, loads of, loads of stuff, and then someone will mention it, thinks, all oh, right, yeah, and then some things are. Uh, haven't been very nice, and you don't, yeah. You know I mean, you don't sort of like to, you know, stand on top of the and shout, shout to everybody and tell them about it. It's just like, and personally, I think stuff must be happening to people all the time, and they may be totally yeah. unaware it's happened because some things I've, I've seen, some odd things that's just been solid, you know. What I mean, like you could go up to it and touch it. Because it's yeah, it sort of like being whispery or odd. It's just really strange, and and sometimes among other people, things have happened. I mean, I could tell you all sorts of tales, but we haven't got the time to tell you it now. Which have things have happened that's been witnessed by lots of people at the same time, and then other times, some of it will be there, and no one else has noticed it. I've just thought, okay, then. Mm. Um, yeah, all right, whatever. And, you know, a little instance, at our lock-up um, a few months back, I was down there. And uh, anyway, wherever it is, it's an old RAF, RAF base. And I got I got proper touched on the back of my hand. So I finished up saying, all right, yeah, yeah. And, all, and then our last was at the other end. And he says, oh, you t what are you on about? What are you talking? To? You know what I mean? I just says, no, you're all right. It's just me waffling to myself. And then a few minutes later, she says, I've just been touched on my head. So she says, what was you on about down there? I said, well, I got touched on my hand. Mm. So it was like, all right, mm. thank you. Don't do it again, please. Mm. It's the last thing I wanted is I will last freaking out. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. She's not, so, yeah, so, not there anyway, but. so well, that one of them then, Linny, that, that if, if, if your last hadn't have, Felt the sensation of a touch on her head. You would have said nothing. Yeah, I wouldn't have said no. No, there you go. I wouldn't have said no. It was just it's it's part and parcel of being at that in that area. It's I just know there's some potentially that that will occur around there. Mm. You just you just you get a feeling for it. You just know it's not unfri it's not unfriendly at all. It's there's it's nothing sinister there. And I've had I've had sinister things. That's been really, really uncomfortable. That's that I think. No, that can that can bugger off. Like, yeah, you know I mean, and yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what about you, Martin? Have you ought to add to it, or shall we move on to the next question? Well, I mean, I, I um, <clears throat> I guess when I was a kid, I had that whole sort of twin twin interaction, which I mentioned before, the whole appendix coming out and pain in the tummy and everything else. Um, I used to have unusual um. I don't know. I used to dream things that came true, but I think everyone has that kind of phenomenon happening. I think, you know, everyone thinks, oh, I remember that. And that was my dream. And I'd hear a kind of a, a knock in my head, you know, like bang, bang, bang. You know, the knocks thing that you mentioned. Yeah. I'd hear that and then I'd wake up and I'd, I'd have a dream about something that was going to happen. So usually that would, was a sign that it was going to happen. Um, 
that whole then remote viewing thing and and just you know i guess i i, I personally haven't had very much ufo interaction it's only been since i've been going up to benton at least certainly nothing that i can remember um no. i've had that sort of more unusual thing i guess i once went to a medium after my wife passed away and she mentioned about a female etc and i didn't say anything i purposely wouldn't say anything a strong woman's looking out for you everything else so that kind of then highlighted that kind of thing about near-death experiences and after you know what happens when you die so that was kind of a little bit about that interest that i've got um but i think being a good researcher is about having an interest in everything because i think it's yeah. all connected as we've already said you know it's all about consciousness yeah. and the connection together so um I, I, I you know we don't that's not the subject of tonight's discussion but yeah that's kind of where i'm i am with it okay. thank you well we'll go to les then and it is with another les <clears throat> okay well staying with uh, you martin this question is for you from Alderum. Nerdy question for Doc Martin. What data analysis plans do you have for the stratification uh, data? <laughs> Here we go. Here's my stats coming out. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, I need a big data set. So, uh, again, another plug. Please, please, please um, do, do the form if you can. What we're going to um, look to do, because there's been a fair bit of feedback about, it's quite tricky to do it on Word and not on your phone. So um, I might try and just change it around a little bit so that we can just send you a, the email with it in and then you can fill out the email directly and just reply back with the report or the reply and try and make it a little bit easier to sort of just, you know, just describe it. And then I'll figure out what kind of interaction it was. If you can say, I think it was a, a cryptid or whatever, then that will help. Um, and then in terms of data analysis, I think we'll go for, you know, what I'd like to do at the end of it is have a, a, an answer that says, well, look, the likelihood is, is that if you are um, in this sort of area and you're hungry and you've been, you've gone out to try and find the phenomenon, you're more likely to have a UFO thing. If you, if you have a cultural background of this or, or that or the other, and I'll probably try and break it down for each of the criteria, you know, what was the more likely outcome? You know, were you more likely to have a cryptid, a, um, a UAP or uh, other phenomenon? Uh, you know, was it a, angelic experience if you're religious for example um we said about being hungry or not hungry um you know these are the sorts of things i'm going to try and do and then you know for each each domain try and put down it's more likely if you're hungry or not um and then with all of them together kind of give you this picture of the kind of person uh, or individual that's gonna be more prone or less prone to have a, a, an interaction with the phenomenon that's what i'd like to try and do but obviously it only becomes real and significant if the data set is big enough, which is probably one of the reasons why you asked me to come back on, Paul. <laughs> well, it is. It is. And, but, you, I mean, you're stressed on the diet side of things there because it's – I don't mean nobody's ever touched on it, but it's something that's not touched on loads. And I think, I think what we eat and what we drink does have a massive effect on our interaction or uh, uh, the potential opening or access to this unknown other. Uh, I, I really do. And we talked about that when we put it together. So uh, mm. it's, it's, you know, for the people who just, I don't know, stand in a field or stand in a location or go to a haunted location thinking this is where it's going to happen. Probably yeah. we, we have to set ourselves up for it as well. Man, yeah. And what whether, it, dietary, nutrition, you know. Yeah. And whether or not you do that meditation that Dr. Greer does or, or which seems to maybe beckon them in. Um, or whether or not there's a an element of your own ideas about what you're going to see. I mean, you mentioned before that um, people will often say, oh, I just saw a UFO or I saw a cryptid. But in actual fact, there's multiple elements of the phenomenon presenting itself, you know, lights in addition to, um, you know, poltergeist activity in addition to cryptid, you know, it all sort of molds into one. So uh, on the on the cliffs, you've seen cryptid activity. You've seen uh, intelligent light phenomenon. You've heard unusual uh, noises from the cliff with the were frog, <laughs> you know, um, you know, it's all coming together. And that whole fear phenomenon, you know, it doesn't have to be visual or auditory. No. It could be an emotional sense. Um, so I've had the fear. You've had the fear. Linny's had the fear. Um, Bob's had, Bob's had it. Fear, yeah, Bob. yeah, you know, so, so is, is this phenomenon one detectable? Yes. Cause we can see it. We can hear it. We can feel it. Um, sometimes it even implants in your head, the, you know, symbols, you know, some people I've heard of, 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 of almost not daydreaming, but then suddenly had this light in front of their eyes and implanted with symbols. You know, uh, one of the questions I asked on one of your on one of the talks previously was, did someone write down what those symbols are? Can you decipher them? Could this be alien language? Could it be something you could, 
you know, is it is it similar to cuneiform, <laughs> the ancient uh, times of Sumeria? You know, is there kind of connections? I'm, all, all I'm trying to do in, in a lot of the things I do is try and scientifically triangulate and connect epi- uh, things together, almost like a meta-analysis of all the unusual phenomenon of um, uh, that, that's being presented, uh, all this high strangeness, some, some sort of connection is there and how does it connect? For us, and, and this tool, it's about, well, how do we draw it in, as we've said on, 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 the, on the cast before? But you can only decide and, and find that out depending on how, m- how many people reply, because obviously if everyone's you know, full, just had dinner and they go up to the cliffs for a walk, well, <laughs> we're going to have a person that gets interactions because you know, when they're full and, you know, and yeah. just had dinner. You know, but, so but, that's an issue. But it will be good if, the, just one sec, Les, I know you've got another question lined up, but it would be good if, if with enough data put forward and please if you know there's what we've got 226 people watching now if you've had an experience and we'll t- we'll touch on the anonymity in a moment but it would be good because i've said loads of times ufo researchers tend to see ufos cryptid researchers see cryptids but w- what if, what if you went and your particular passion was the ufo and that's what you saw or your passion was the cryptid and that's what you saw it would be brilliant if that showed up in the data as well an absolutely brilliant pattern which to me would lead us to thinking that this is one singular intelligence giving us what we want yeah but but anyway uh can i just just ask a question as well um when you're looking into data or anything like that um we've found out of the years Different phenomena might appear in June or July every year or September. You know, I write everything down, what I've seen, and the date and the time. So I can look back and think, bloody hell, that happened the year before. It. Very same time. The, Do you think we ought to look into that as well? Well, I think that's going to – it will reveal it, Bob, that, that the yeah. tool. We call it, it's called a tool, but, you know, these, these pieces of paper will reveal that, Bob, yeah. But it's great, yeah. I mean, it's in the description, and, and I remember you saying, Paul, that, you know, a lot of the stuff is going on with June, and I just thought to myself, you know, we, we, we kind of decided in the descriptor, hopefully people would put down, you know, what when did it happen, what time. So not only what time of day, but what time of year. Um, so that's one yeah. of the questions. Um, location one of the questions is it close or not to uh RAF or military base is it if it's not well you know was were you out on a campfire someone's mentioned you know the campfires draw them in well I thought to myself well maybe they do um it's a nice beacon but maybe you know you're out and about is you're in the dark you're doing something which not a lot of people do there everyone's watching eastenders or whatever aren't they <laughs> you know it's right you know not, not a lot of people go out camping and looking at the stars and martin and, and just before you go to the question because i know les is itching because les gets punished if he don't get his <laughs> questions out but so before we end the stratification tool yeah. anonymity for people sending it yeah so um it comes to a email address that i then forward that through to my um well it's it's, it's a secure email address um and it's deleted from any other sort of email addresses it's going to be on a secure nhs database it's my own personal folder essentially i anonymize it as well so that it's sort of you know your name's not near it it's it's numbered essentially um unless you want it to be named and you want to speak to paul about your experience and you want to maybe then discuss or even come on the show if, if you're interested um the event you know that that's kind of what we're trying to do so you know, if if someone who was in the military was he mentioned it and and they sent it anonymously, it, you know, within a minute of it coming through, it would be deleted. And right, let's okay. move on to question. Yeah, and uh, would you would you sticking on this uh, stratification tool for this question? Oh, uh, from uh, Lee Roscoe. Uh, and by the way, the stratification tool download is in tonight's description, along with the email that you uh, can send it to. So Lee Roscoe is asking, are you both seeing any patterns to the questionnaire? I, I, have you had any early analysis, uh, Martin? Well, I'll let Ma- Martin answer it. I know what he's going to say. Well, there isn't enough. There are there isn't quite a lot enough data yet. But of the small sample size, um, we're fi- we're actually finding that people who are hungry end up having more of an, uh, have have a um, are having yeah. more um, episodes. At the moment, that's both UAP, poltergeist, and cryptid. Um, so um, yeah, I mean that's what I can tell you so far. Um, some people have had. Um, experiences in the family so pretty much all all the sample have had experiences within the family and other members have experienced similar um mainly uap in that one 
um, and um, have got a, a strong spiritual kind of connection as a result. So I'd say that's probably what the outcome is so far. But the sample size isn't big enough for you to really justify giving an answer like that. But it's just interesting. And it's certainly interesting reading them. Uh, you know, and there's quite a lot of similarities from from some of the things that you tell us about some of the stories you say, Paul. You know, I met this woman. She said this, and uh, and 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 the and the stories are so similar. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's almost like you know, it's a cut and paste. You know, yeah. the phenomenon is doing the same thing to everybody. Maybe we yeah. are the test subjects of of their, yeah. their their activity, and the activity has to be the same, so it's reproducible, much like yeah. our. <laughs> our triangulation tool has to be the same questions for everybody so that we can understand the outcome. Yeah, interesting. Cool. Uh, I just thought that was very interesting. Very cool. interesting. Um, I've, yeah. I've got uh, 23 questions uh, lined up here, whether we'll get through them all. Uh, I apologise now if I'd have got all your questions out tonight. You seem again a bit red, Leslie, wanted to get them questions I'm out. Gonna, I'm going to try my best. And uh, you, we've got Everybody okay for time? Scott Lawrence. Uh, um, Right. Would you guys agree that if you give any location as much time as you do, things will happen? And thanks for your show. I'm loving it. Uh, basically, I, I don't think we give it enough time. I think, we, you know, no. we need a dedica dedicated group of people up there. But I would agree, Scott, you, if you're in an area where things present and you spend some time in it, you have more chance of seeing something over to anybody else. Yeah. Um, I think obviously it depends on the area. So in London, I think people still see things. I, I, I saw a patient today and he said, oh, yeah, you know, like literally down the road. Oh, yeah, I saw three of those. I've got a picture of um, I want to believe this. This picture is on my wall in my office. And he said, oh, yeah, I saw three of those last year over over. I can't tell you exactly which road, but he said over that road. Yeah. And that was in the day. Now, obviously, at night, there's a lot of light pollution, so it's difficult. So I guess you're probably more likely to see something where there's less light pollution. Um, and two, I, I don't know about you, Paul, but I, I'm seeing that phenomenon. It seems to stretch across these ley lines within, you know, natural energy lines. Yeah. Um, you, they see that at Skinwalker. They see that in other ranches in America. And I believe that's at Filingdale's, that the line seems to run through. Got the the Bempton Fault. Fault as well. right. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's interesting how that seems to attract the phenomenon, the, the natural energies of the earth. So, um, you know, that whole dowsing thing may have something more to it <laughs> than, than just a couple of rods. You know, I tried it. It seemed to work. I don't know. Yeah, yeah um, we've tried it at Bempton as well. There's, but there's a ley line that goes from Red Newton Forest to Bempton. That, yeah, the, 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 uh, allegedly there is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, staying with you, Bob, I've got a question uh, from uh, the lovely uh, Debbie. Debbie Shaw, a question for Bob. Did you have any uh, strange uh, or paranormal experiences when you were a child, Bob? Oh, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I used to have a, when I was about five or six years old, I used to have a little, I used to talk to this person, what wasn't, well, my mum used to say, Oh, you're talking to her. And I said, My friend's here. My mum. Oh, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> my my friends here, she said, well, there's nobody there. I said, well, I can see the, this little child here in front of me. The same age as me as well. I we used to chat for ages every day. Every day uh, on an afternoon, I'd be talking away. And to me, it was a real person. Real. Was it audible, Bob, or was it in your head that you were talking? No, I could hear I could hear every word. What was said, and uh, it was so strange. And and then I reckon for about two or three years, and then all of a sudden, my mum used to say, There's something wrong with that child, meaning me. <laughs> well, she wasn't it's, wrong, he's definitely not right in head. And it was, and I used to just laugh about it. And then as the years went on, it just went completely, disappeared yeah. completely. But you still got that interest. And, what, uh, let, let's let's it, just it, before we... I think it got me interested more then. Yeah, well, I'm sure it did. Let, uh, and can we just throw that to him before we close it down? Have, have you got out to add to that one, Ian? No, nope. not really. No, okay. No, no one wants to go with his questions. <laughs> go on, then. Oh, God. Thank, you. Thank you, Ian. That's uh, yeah, right then. Uh, Lee Roscoe is going another question. In question, do you think it would be as active, active if there were camera? And tech on the true proof land. Uh, uh, I think oh, it, means, it, it, was, 
If it was there, uh, 24, first. I think it means if it was there twenty four seven, would it be there? Uh, would it be as active or or what? All guests, put Linny first, please. Yeah, that's good. I'd, I'd like to think so. Yeah, I really would like to think so. I mean, we manage to pick things up, but hmm. we, we can't be there all the time. And yeah, you know I mean, the towns we are there, we have picked things up. Even though majority of the time there's no, there's not really, really important or out. But occasionally there's some things that you can't explain it. So I think if cameras hmm. was there, yeah, I think it. I'd like to think it would. It'd help. Hmm. Well, there's that guy at Thornit Bay who, is, who you talked to, Paul. Yep. He was going to put a, 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 a camera up there, wasn't he? Is, what, what's happened, Bob? I, and I saw him yesterday, not to speak to, but I did see him in town. Uh, he drives an orange van. Uh, not that it matters. And he's got a huge camera, proper street CCTV camera on the cliff tops at Thornwick Bay, close to the cafe. This little old cafe that's up there, and I've approached him now probably four times and said, "Well, people in chat will know. Get this hooked up to a server, and I, I'm sure our our viewers would be yeah. willing to pay a small amount of money right. to look to look at uh, over the sea with this great camera." And uh, he's he's not down on the idea. He just had a few problems and a few things to work through. And he, I said, "Shall I stop asking you?" He said, "No." He said, so, he's, so I will keep persisting uh, and seeing whether we can get anywhere with it. So that would be good. But, I mean, Linus said it and Pete said it. And I wonder whether if we went up one night without any tech, without any cameras, whether we'd see anything, whether we'd see more. Maybe because it does. it's so evasive, let's face it. Subtitle at first book, Truth That Leaves No Proof. You, you, nobody seems to be able to get that absolute definitive, do they? Mm -hmm. And you know, what if I we think, went without anything? Go on, Martin. I think, Paul, that perhaps, I mean, we said it before, the phenomenon seems to be attracted to our consciousness, our, our individuality, right? And it shows off or it, or it hides um, and even manipulates if you speak to um, Nathaniel. Um, Nathaniel Gillis, Nathaniel Gillis. Yeah, yeah. If you have... Um, if you have the tech on you and it seems to hide away when you when you're actually trying to get your phone, you're trying to show the you know the yeah. psionics, the, the phenomenon, it hides, it runs away. But if you had a um a pitch where it's on all the time and there's not no one's really thinking about it, perhaps the phenomenon would just be passing by and it's not really paying attention because you're not there giving yeah. it the attention it requires and yeah. thus interacting. So I wonder if actually you'd actually have an awful lot more um things to to see and visit visible stuff so you get a lot of you know uh, ring doorbell footage no one's no one's looking at that it's just turned on what's yeah. going on um versus less of the stuff yeah, like yeah. picture of it you see what i mean yeah, point, yeah. Uh, yeah i agree with that component here that we're not we're not sort of grasping les has got through three of his 20 odd questions <laughs> there's more there's, there's more <laughs> 25 there is now. Out, 25. I'm battling away. Oh, we're we're not going to do them. We're Mark not going to do them in 30 minutes, but go on, Les. Mark Anderson, Martin, a bit out there as a question, but do you think there could be a correlation between gut flora in cattle and cattle mules? Um, the thing about gut flora is, unless you were to do a, a project which looked at what gut flora was occurring in those cattle which were mutilated, you wouldn't, need, you wouldn't be able to tell. Two, you know, once it's going through a state of decomposition, would that gut flora change? Three, someone asked a question last time about, you know, is there a correlation between what is eaten and, and you know, what is the what is the foliage um, around the flora uh, around where a dead cat, where dead cattle is found? And is there a correlation? I don't think anyone's done any sort of research on that. Presumably it's the same foliage everywhere for most cattle. You know, if they're going to browse, they're going to browse on it. Um, difficult. I don't know is the answer. But, we know but, then, but then, you know, it might be, that's an interesting one because it could actually be composition of soil, whether there's iron in soil, different types of minerals, other minerals in soil. So, yeah, I wonder if that's exactly. been done. It could be very interesting. I mean, we see that we see that phenomenon with crop circles. When a real crop circle is formed, they've got the change in the telomeres, haven't they? They've got the, the growth yeah. plates affected by the whatever that radiation, whatever it might be. There's presumably some changes to dead cattle as well, or dead animals which are interacting with the true phenomenon. I don't know. I don't. I'm done the research. 
Um, maybe someone has. Right, go on. It's us with another question. Have you got? Have you got? Uh, I've got a bit more diverse. Questions. Yeah. Um, okay. Going back to the uh, the lights uh, that seem to happen behind you at uh, Benson, uh, Steve Trees is asking, could the light be so quick your retina can't absorb it? I don't know. I've, I've, honestly, Steve, I, I think proofs in pudding. Ian managed to capture it. He saw it when he when he looked at his footage, and who'd have thought it? <laughs> I, just... mm -hmm. I, th I think I don't think that that would be the case. I think if it's so fast, your re as long as the as long as the light hit the back of the retina, yeah. um, the retina, the, 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 the rods and cones would respond. It's more rod. It's more. It's more rods actually, because they're black and white. So. Your rods would respond. It would only be whether, or not, for me, it would only be whether or not you'd blinked. So you know your eyes were actually closed. But that light is so bright, you would have to say it's so bright it would go through your through 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 the um, through through the uh, your, your eyelids. It would go through your eyelids. You know when you yeah. look at a bright light, you'd see through. You can see bright light, right? So then you'd say to yourself, well, look, if this is detectable on the camera, but it's not detectable by our vision, is this at some wavelength that I can't detect? Mm. And do you see what I mean? So, you know, cameras can detect certain levels of wavelength that we can't. Um, maybe that's the rationale. Or maybe, maybe, and I'll, contra I'll, I'll uh, contradict myself, was it was it so low intensity but detectable by a camera that we couldn't detect it with our eyes? Yeah. But okay. then that doesn't kind of compute because it's visible when we look at it yeah. on the phone. So it doesn't, it doesn't match up. And when it, things don't match up like that, it makes you think it's, it, it's unusual. And I think it's highly unusual. I'm so glad he saw it. Go on, Les. Okay. Um, Dean Cullen, and uh, welcome to the show, Dean, if you're still here. Paul, have you noticed the shadows cast are different? Looking on your um, grass, can you can follow back to the source, the brighter uh, appearance oh. to come from higher or above and beyond? Well, uh, I, I, I take it that you're referring to what Linny filmed the other night on monday dean and good to good to see you here mate and but obviously you guys have seen just about as much as me linny sent it me this about dinner time i quickly threw it into resolve i mean it'd be good to do a little bit more work on it uh, maybe les can have a look at it as well and see if he can do some more with it but to me the shadows in front of it, where we're actually looking at the the, the visitor centre, there's a, there's a there's a dark area in front between visitor centre and that intense light, and there seems to be dark area in front of us. And and as Martin says, if that were a light from directly behind us, it would have cast our shadows out onto the land. It's from above, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I need somebody to do a lot more work on it. I think. Okay. <clears throat> A question from Carl Dan. Could someone have been taking an infrared photo of your group from a cloaked or other covert position? Don't know. And good to see you, Carl, but I don't know. Very good question, that, Carl, because infrared would be not visible to our naked eye, wouldn't it? And it would mm. might show up on, on photos. Les, you're the expert photo. Would it have to be from above, do you think? that? I think that's from above. Well, a, um, you know, a, a black hawk or something not creating a lot of wind, downwind, you know, on silent mode. I don't know. Or a drone. You know, you could have a drone yeah. doing it. Um, we've got the new Jackal, haven't we? That that's, They've been testing. Maybe they were testing that around you. Um, mm -hmm. That's the new drone that the Brits have got. So I say Brits, we, we've got. Um, yeah. So maybe, I don't know. Yeah, good question, that, Carl. Yeah. Well, I, I, I considered it, you know, I mean, when I've been listening to this now, because we didn't see it with our 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 basic naked eyes it's if it was an ir flash we wouldn't have seen it but surely i'd have seen it through the viewfinder of me psionics which yeah. is as you all know is is really sensitive to ir light mm. unless i blinked at the right time which it, you know what i mean is plausible but then four of you blinking at the same time did yeah, it was only, there was only me looking through the camera martin oh uh, you pulled in his psionics on as well no. Uh, I don't think I did. No, Ian is looking at the compound. Uh, I'd got the psionics with me, but I weren't filming compound. I'm so pleased he was. But this is the point: we have to try and defunct these things so that we can mm. then show that you know we're really scientifically trying to look at this in a objective way. And you know, it, it's a possibility. You couldn't say no, but it's still mm. highly unusual. I think. Mm. Yeah. Yes, so if I had a and, and not seen it through the viewfinder, mm. it's still 
the question is, if it was IR light or another light, where's it where's it from and, and why was it doing that? Exactly. Yeah. Why on earth would they we wanted to take pictures of you lot? <laughs> when you're, yeah, exactly. when you're from the and if they had good enough tech, it wouldn't they won't be using IR anyway, would they? No, they'd be using probably infrared or something, wouldn't they? They'd have um, well, probably thermal. You know, exactly. Oh thermal, sorry, not infrared, thermal, yeah. 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 Thermal. Yeah. Okay. I got, I got a question from Lee Roscoe again. Question if you I think if you could LIDAR the uh, field of the submarine land, would it would give you more answers? And for those who don't know what LIDAR is, it's well, like, well I, I don't know how far it penetrates. So how, yeah. uh, I don't know how far that uh, would penetrate or how deep. I mean, that's a, it might how deep you no, it, Right, yeah. okay. Well, I think what it is, Lee, yeah, from my limited knowledge of uh, LIDAR, is it's just surface uh, um, visuals, that's all. It's nothing deep underground that you can uh, use ladder for. So, okay. but anyway, yeah. And, uh, okay, I've got a question from... This uh, is... See, Dave Barker says, good to see you here, Ian. I hope, Dave. All right, Dave. <laughs> yeah, go on, Les, sorry. <clears throat> Matthew Cook, to all of you, uh, lots of weird seismic signals around Scarborough. Do you think this might have anything to do with strange noises underground? That's interesting. It could have, yeah, it could do, Matthew, yeah. Well, Paul, I spoke to you previously about the um, the unusual hum. Um, yeah. I thought, what the hell is that? You know, I thought about putting some foil on my head or something in case it was <laughs> in case it was you know causing harm to me. I mean, uh, and the other half sleeping in the bed, and you know, and I just thought to myself, could that be underground? Um, you know, military creating more base. You know, doing some underground tunneling because it's a really unusual mechanical hum, isn't it, in that area? <laughs> It is, is it? I know, and I know, but we've we, we've heard it in town. Bob's heard it. Yeah, I've heard it. Yeah, we've heard it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, well, I'd like to follow on for that because uh, Zeno comes up with, uh, in respect to the underground noises, is it possible that they are boring programs underneath uh, the UK, similar to the US, with massive underground cities, according to whistleblowers. Don't know. I suppose we'll leave all the cards on the table, Zeno, but I couldn't answer that one. I have no idea, but there's certainly something happening that's yeah. that we can hear. I think if you remember, uh, Paul, we spoke already about the, the tunnels that crisscross potentially the whole of England. It yeah. would make sense that we would have bases underneath. There'd be no sense not having bases. And if America's doing it, we've got Area 51 and you know, the Mesas, you know, Dulce Base, etc. And they're theoretically all connected by trains. That's what some people say. Mm. Mm. Then why wouldn't Britain do it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, you know, we were the first to start doing this intelligence, Lark. You know, it would be stupid if we weren't the, the, the forefront of, of, of this as well. And other people are copying us. Yeah, because everything subsurface. I mean, it's it's all if if the if they'd got the tech to yeah. do this tunneling, this boring, then then why wouldn't we be involved as well? Yeah, you good point. Okay, I got a question from Ian Liston Smith. Have uh, probably for you, we're primarily Paul. Have you made any accurate radio signal measurements on the cliffs using a basic SDR and broadband antennae? Uh, this would indicate something interesting from something man-made. Uh, we haven't. We started. We started doing a, a lot of tech experiments, and Les has been involved in in this as well uh, with Peter Masters. And it's not an excuse. Ian, P, Ian Peter's been ill. He's had a pretty major operation, and he's recovering. So we'll resume all that. I mean, we've been up there, and we have been filming, and we've got some interesting results. Uh, and that's why we took somebody qualified to to sort of break down what we were finding. So. There might be more to come on that, Ian, in the future. That's all I can say. Okay, I'll move on with this question from Steve 71. Why do you think everything tends to go quiet just before phenomena occurs? Anybody? Open to everybody. Any, anybody got any thoughts? Difficult. I mean, it could be, you know, some sort of frequency that they're producing when they are in the area. Um, everything radiates with a certain vibration, doesn't it? We mentioned that previously. Could it be that that somehow affects our auditory senses in our brains in some way? We know that potentially you can put in um, sounds into, you know, you can make people hear things in the brain if you stimulate their, their their brains in the right way. Schizophrenics, for example, they don't just see things, their brains actually detect neurological changes, which then they see. So, you know, 
there's there's real life phenomenon which you can which you have where the brainwave does something and you see something could it be that that can be superimposed by the phenomenon and thus maybe a side effect or part of it is where you reduce the sound that you hear i don't know it, it I'm, just, I'm just musing about it and, and could it be that that if 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 what you're talking about is correct it's affecting every other living thing as well and that's why the silence occurs so it's it's not well, it, it could well be much like much like the screaming of the birds when you were walking along um in in the forest could it be that this is the opposite of that it, mm -hmm. they, they kind of hide away um, and don't scream and alert because it's such a significant thing yeah. that they're detecting. You know, we know birds and, and animals detect vibration yeah. of of, um, of uh, seismic activity. Could it be something that they're detecting in that way as well? I don't know. I don't, I yeah. don't get that. I don't get that. I, I can't see how some it would, personally, I would make everything, little, little crickets and bugs, everything, go quiet. Mm. I think it's, it's, it's actually on the individual that gets shut down yeah. somehow. Okay. Yeah, the auditory center that's why i yeah. thought that's why but and, 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 and i think you you know i think that that's as plausible as anything i've said you know because we don't know do we no. okay uh, ben, yeah ben k lives three miles from bempton uh i live three miles from bempton for 21 years but never visited the cliffs and never wanted to does the phenomena push some people away uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Ben, you. Uh, I think I know who you are as well. Y you know, you've probably just never visited because you've not wanted to. I don't know. Exactly. Uh, I think you know, so. I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if you went, you might have an absolutely incredible experience and nothing to do with the unexplained. Let's face it, as, as Bob touched on earlier, it's a nature reserve. It gets loads of footfall during yeah, the day. Yeah, probably do. You probably 99.9% .9 of people visiting just got to look at birds and have a great time doing exactly that. So I, I don't know, Ben. Well, yeah, you, you was. I mean, I had to mention his name, but there's a chap there who went up there with his wife a couple of years ago and she went, walked up to the top stand, walked around, and, and she, she was gone double fast back to the car park and says, Never again. Absolutely, she she. I think Bob were with me. I'm not certain, Bob, but I think she right. passed her own way, and uh, and and absolutely frightened to death. She and she wanted to sit in the car in the darkness. Yeah, and this this weren't somebody who were interested in paranormal. <laughs> just just strange experience, but it it had a negative effect on this lady anyway. Yeah. Well, it's it's uh, funny that you mentioned that one uh, in because, and I mentioned this to Paul. Uh, I had a small camper van at one period. Paul seen it, and you, Paul? That one I had. And mm, yeah. I, I took it up to Bempton. And as, as you guys probably know, you get people staying overnight, you know, until obviously the, the payments kick in until the following morning. But they stay overnight on there for free. I did the very same thing. And I stayed, as you drive round, it's a one way all the way around. And there's a little car park on the left as you drive in. You know what the one I mean, uh, Ian? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I parked in there, and you know what? Uh, the wife said to me, and it we got settled that out. Uh, he got to about midnight, and she said, I don't like it here, I don't like it. Here. And I had to leave, pack up everything, and um, drive away and come straight home, basically. And, th and that, I should imagine, how long since is that, Les? We're going back, what, 15, no, 20 years? No, about five, five, six years, I think. All right, fair, 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 fair. Right. Okay. Don't surprise me. Yeah, so she had this feeling. She, I said, "What is it? What's, what is it? What's you know bugging you? What? Because I couldn't, you know, I couldn't sense anything. Nothing out of the ordinary to me. So that's weird. Mm, yeah, it's yeah. weird how some sometimes it, it it wants you there, and sometimes it doesn't want you there, and it makes it very clear you need to get lost. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's weird, and maybe uh, it, is is that how we're presenting ourselves to it, or or something else that's putting it putting it, you know." He doesn't like the look of us tonight. Let's let's get him to clear off. I don't know. Yeah. When, you, hey, when you're talking about that, we used to have Andy come up, up to Benton and he can be there in five minutes or half an hour and he wants to go home. Yeah, and he's drove a considerable distance. And yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it, you, you used to scratch your head thinking, why have you come? You just can't. It just so I don't know. Sensitive, frightened, or squeamish. I don't know what it was, but it, it affected him. 
Go right. on then, Les. Yeah, can I just say at this point, Paul, have you um, have you got any books to push or DVDs? Oh, or anything? Actually, I have. Yeah. yeah <laughs> no, there's, so, so, so there's three. There's five books. So we've got uh, Night People there, and then we've got Truth Proof One, Two, and Three. I've got a delivery of number ones, the orange ones. I haven't got any here, have I? The other day. So they're, they're going to be available now. Put them onto the website. So you can get them through truthproof.uk or you can get the uh, DVD, ad copies, some of me and Les never thought people would want, but they do. Or you can download that Amazon Prime. And uh, likewise, you can get the books via... Uh, Kindle downloads. So yeah, thanks for reminding us about that, Les. And the stratification yeah. tool is where, Martin. That's um, on our description. It's on our website. You had me there, you had me there didn't you? <laughs> it's it's truthproof.uk. That's and, it. There you go. And uh, like as Martin says, you know, is we'll we'll we'll, we'll alter it. Yeah, so that it's a little bit more accessible for you guys, because I know most of people, if you unless you're a dinosaur like me, use a phone for everything. Yeah. And it, this is great with a PC or a laptop at the moment. But yeah, what I might, as I say, what I might do is I might, I might um, change it so it's an email format, and all you have to do is say, you know, send send an email to that address that's on there, any disclosure at code UK, and I'll send you it. I'll send you. A, I'll send you it to you, so you don't even have to mess about. And then you just fill out the fill out the the, the questions, which will be in an email, and then you just reply it back. So it might be easier Brilliant. than having Word and all the rest of it. Uh, and, and apologies for the questions because we're not going to get through. We need to do this again one week because there's, there's just too many questions. I know that. Okay. Welcome to the show. He's asking, uh, good evening, everyone. Blue light seems to be prevalent in many phenomena events. What are your thoughts on this? It, it, well, where we're concerned, we're seeing a lot of orange lights. However, we have seen blue lights. Uh, so, so yeah, the, the present. Anybody else thoughts on that? No. I mean, <clears throat> I was looking at some research about the – mass inertia device that the they've got a patent for from america the united states air force um if you read that i mean it, it's basically a, a how-to about how to do a anti-grav anti anti inertia device and it it seems to have this whole phenomenon about having a very polarized charged outer surface of your shell and that might well give you a blue hue um i don't know about it how, if it would give you an orange hue but I think I think that's probably where I'd see that, you know, in, you know, okay. see in the TR3B that triangular craft that you saw. That's what that's what kind of sprung to mind when when you were saying that. Okay, um, I've got a question from Doc uh, from uh, Enigma. Doc Martin, can you comment on possible neurological causes of the phenomena? Well, then we're looking at biological causes. So then you you're thinking mental health issues rather than anything else. If if, if we're saying the phenomenon is external mm. to you, not you then it's not biological by definition it's something extra um and it may give you uh, biological outcomes from its interaction with you but i don't think it would be a neurological thing if you've got a neurological thing that's causing this phenomenon then you need to see a neurologist <laughs> you know mm -hmm. you've, got, you've got an issue you either got a biological issue or a mental health issue um, um but if it's a true phenomenon then that's not that uh, and a yeah. lot of people who have contact have got a true phenomenon it's not it's not a mental health issue. Or Do you know, I'm, I'm conscious that we've got 10 minutes left, Les. And are you wanting to run with questions, Les, to the end? Because if not, we're going to have to have Linny back because I wanted to hear Linny's story, but and, which you might not want to tell. You Are you happy with questions, Ian? Yeah, are carry you? on. Well, I mean, yeah, okay. Carry on. So, to do it any justice anyway, it's probably over on 10 minutes anyway. Yeah, fair crap. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay, I've got a um, from Mickey Parker, and you might have to fill uh, the backstory in here, Paul. Evening, gents. Good to see you. I remember when you played me the strange audio from Bob's podcast. It was definitely separate to the underlying audio. That's right. It was. We sent it, didn't we, Paul? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm scratching my head going back with this, Mick. Uh, yes. What of course I do. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, we're not on cliff tops now. And, and obviously, Mick's interest, Mick's passion, Mick's work is music. Yeah, and, did, uh, yeah. For for anybody that don't know, this is the guy that produced the music for Wolflands and did the most incredible job for us. Yeah. Uh, so he played the audio, and yeah, it were definitely separate. I mean, Mick sort of detached it and and it messed about with it and could tell. Yeah, yeah, you're correct there, Mick. Thank you. But we didn't realise until after the 
after we'd finished, that the uh, Susan, who producer of the show, said, I've heard this voice. Did you hear it? I said, no, we didn't hear it. She said, he said, I'll get Jennifer to enhance the sound and I'll send it you. So she sent it yeah. to me. I sent it to Paul and he sent it to Mick. <clears throat> That's what makes that even more genuine, you know, Bob, because I'm glad you've added that bit because we never heard it. No, we didn't. It, 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 were your, it were the producer of the show, Susan, as you've just said, who heard that voice. So just like the flash of light that we never saw. And then Mick did some work on it. And it, it, it definitely weren't our voices. And what you know? voice was it? What did it say then, Paul? What did it say, Bob? Anna, what did it say? Explain. It said, explain it. So, so yeah. Andrew Collins, we're doing a podcast. Andrew I'm was talking Paul. about interdimensional things like that. And this voice just came and said, explain it. I, I was sat with Bob in that room. Uh, you were both me here. And 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 so Andrew's talking, and everybody. No disrespect to Andrew, we we kind of love Andrew. He's a great guy. Yeah, he's, he's going on guy. in the way that he does, just on like a machine gun. And a voice just came out and said, "Explain it," which we never heard, but it's there as clear as day. Thanks for bringing that up, Mick, because it's helped clarify a little bit. Okay, so what else have you got about? Not so, so much. Not sorry, so much. just just to uh, caveat what I said at the last thing. Someone mentioned about any biological causes of phenomenon. I do yeah. think as well that emotional um, stresses, so for example, death of a partner, death of someone close to you, that can increase your sensitivity to the phenomenon. Serious illnesses potentially could increase your, you know, your likelihood of interacting with the phenomenon, from what I can see. Um, Near-death experience, people have come back from that kind of event, um, true events, not sort of, you know, that can increase your likelihood of being more empathic uh, you know, there's research on this. There's a guy, yeah. the doctor, um, Doctor Long, uh, Jer Jeffrey Wong, I think, it's Jeffrey Long, Jeffrey Long, Jeffrey Long. He's done four thousand case studies or more than that, NDEs, um, where people come back and they have precognition potentially and other extra phenomena. So it's not biological, but some kind of event can make you more likely to be prone to the phenomenon. It's, but it's not necessarily biological, which is so. Just to caveat that, because there may be people who've had experiences and they've now got more. Um, uh, empathy to the phenomenon. More yeah. in tune with it. Yeah, yeah. There, is, there is an element of that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and I got to at this point thank everybody who's made monetary donations to the channel. Thank you very much, much appreciated. And uh, yes, it will go uh, for fuel money to get to the cliffs, as uh, Ginger One Nine Seven says. And uh, Lee Roscoe, thank you, monetary donation as well. And Jane Louise Hardin. Nice to see you in the chat, Jane, and thank you for that as well. Uh, thank yeah. you, yeah. And, um, okay, David Barker is asking for you, Paul. The footage I sent you, any good? Excellent, Dave, yeah, absolutely. And this is the second time that Dave sent footage, and uh, I've said it before that it's not actually looking onto the sea, but you're in a prime position, Dave, and that offer of uh, putting a camera up, want to take you up on it and uh, I'll, I'll bite camera and we've just got to find some way of fixing it and I don't mean to front of your house, it could do it going on a pole and with an hinge on it, we we're only on about it the other day that we could lower down and because obviously it's going to have to be powered and what have you uh, good to have a talk with you about that Dave I don't want to put any stress on you if, you, if, if it's too much of an asshole, we'll shelve it but uh, it would be brilliant to look over the, that area, absolutely uh, Dippy do not so much a question. Good, no. yeah. yeah, not so much a question. Paul, do you uh, recall the wild camper at the bottom of the cliff who told you he had uh, heard a strange noise? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. There's there's so much of it, uh, Dippy. Honestly, there's there's you, you you forget half of it. I mean, Dave's just talked about was the footage I sent you any good, and my mind's just going to Dave's, but I realise it's come from another source. But uh, but come to Dave. Absolutely brilliant, and but there's so much of it, and Bob knows this, Linny knows it, uh, Martin does to some degree. I know you're not up there all the time, but you've got that many people hitting you with information. Mm. Yeah, but I do remember, yeah, it's just capitalizing on everything and holding everything inside this little brain. <laughs> well, Tracy, to. Yeah, Tracy McKay, um, Mumby, uh, does the phenomena care more when the northern lights are clear? 
I don't know. There's a massive Northern Lights show tonight. I, I did see that advertise. It's going to be absolutely incredible tonight up there if 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 it's clear. But I don't know, Tracy. I don't. I don't think it's making any difference, really. I noticed that uh, Carl Crusher, who we had on last week, were talking about a Stalin, and they see the Northern Lights. So it doesn't seem to have affected the the the, the, the visuals that they're seeing there. And uh, but I tell you what, I did notice, and I'd not so, spoke to Carl about it. I'm gonna keep it really quick. They were talking about shafts of light coming up and and all looking spectacular, as though it was some kind of phenomena. And they were looking at it with the psionics. And to me, it wasn't Northern Lights because we've seen that, Ian, up there. <laughs> do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But anyway. Okay. Do you want any more? I think there's a couple more. There might be well, we'll, we'll have to be quick. We've got three or four minutes. Okay. Well, Dave Backer says, you don't have to justify and explain it away. It's real. It's real. <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. that, mate. Yeah, yeah uh, we agree. We agree. <laughs> Ian Liston Smith, if you listen to the military comms frequencies, you might be able to explain some of those lights. Oh, okay, maybe you explain it to us, mate. I, I, that's not a, being disrespectful because I'd love to hear. You know, I'd, I'd love to, mm. I'd love to learn about it. Uh, Dave Barker, yeah. Uh, when it happens as, as a kid, what then? No diet control, no drugs, no alcohol. Hopefully. Um, I don't think that's going to happen in today's day and age, uh, Dave. Is it? You know. No. Well, I, th I think there's an element there which, which is again a, a similar. A lot of people had a, a events happen to them as children, um, and it seems to follow them onwards through their life. So I think there's a correlation there with with kids having it happen to them. So a lot of the people who speak at these conferences say that they've had episodes where they were children. Yeah. Um, Steve sure. Mira, for example, Paul, yeah, Bob. You know, and, and maybe that's that's had an effect to open up your your sensitivity to the phenomenon. I'll keep quiet now. Sorry, Liz. No, it's all good. Okay. Um, Dogman TV Hunting question. Dr. Abbas, what is his thoughts on the remedial benefits of infrared light and for a UFO experiencer, example, uh, fast faster healing, improved sleep? Well, we know that... Well, it's a tricky question because I'm not an expert in that field, but... I think obviously, you know, we. Uh, what do I know? I know that if you have a strong light, you know, if you've got SADS, which is that seasonal affective disorder, if you have light, um, I've got a light on my desk. I don't have SADS, but I, I like to put it on because it makes me more awake. Um, in terms of healing, etc., I don't know about that. I don't have any literature about that. But I did mention or touch on the last time about the whole frequency of your cells. Could it be that when people have healed by the phenomenon aliens in this in this nature could it be that they're somehow changing your vibration or, or doing something with their light i don't know but there is story there is um you know people recollecting these things where this has happened and if if a lot of people are saying similar much like ndes i keep going on about it but there's four thousand odd cases of it surely there's some element of truth to it um so yeah i mean I, i'm not going to say no to any of that kind of thing um, I think the phenomenon is far more advanced than we give it give it credit for, whether it be alien or not. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, time for one more. Yeah, yeah. Um, question, right, let's have a look. Uh, Jane Louise Harding, again, a question to all of you. What is the most unsettling experience, experience you've had? And... No, it depends how long you want to spend on this. Well, well I'll, not, I'll not answer this one. Uh, all I'm saying is we probably need Ian back to uh, answer that one as well. But go on, on anybody? One, one minute, quick uh, on the bench. We sat there in the dark, in the fog. It's raining, it's cold. And I felt I had to get out of there. I'd been, only been in there about 15 minutes. And I was trying to be brave. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Paul, let's get out. I'm a bit cold. <laughs> I was actually a bit scared. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Bob? Oh, go on, sorry. I'll, I'll have to move on because uh, of time, that's all, guys. Sorry. Uh, Don't want to be hunting question. Do the lights you see change colour due to a Doppler effect? And if so, did the lights contract or it expand in size? The, the I, I would have said that it's not expand. It's more a case of the implode. That's mm. that's what they seem to do to me. Uh, what do you think, Bob? Do. Ian? Yeah, same here. Yeah, they just psh, gone. Close yeah. down, yeah. Yeah, this goes yeah. down completely. Okay, and uh, I'm afraid. Well, not I'm afraid. I'm. Uh, I've got Lee Roscoe. 
uh, saying what a fantastic show, people, and amazing guests as always. It's been brilliant. It's been great to have Bob on, Ian. It's it's up, Martin. It's just been absolutely brilliant. And thank you because I've had nothing yeah. to do. I loved it. So thank you. And uh, so we've got to thank Alison for doing the moderating tonight. Thanks, Alison, thank ever you. so yeah. much. Thanks for yeah, all the donations. Good old Alison. Thanks for the donations, as I've said. And thank you to all our guests. And I'll leave the last word with you, Paul. No, all I can say is thank you and good night. Okay. Yes, thank you. Good night. Catch up with you very soon. You will. <laughs> Bye. We'll see you all. <laughs>